Cheers, everybody. I'm the CNC repairman, and I thought you might want to see how I rebuilt a sub spindle lathe. This machine was pretty much hammered and needed a ton of parts rebuilt. And I spent some time, troubleshot it, got some parts ordered, and ended up doing a full alignment and rebuilding everything under the wedge, took the turret off, took the sub spindle off, put in all new screws and rails. So I'm gonna click through the pictures and talk about what I did in case it might help you or you might be interested in doing something like this one day. So here to begin with, I started working on the machine and I knew it needed a few things, but I wanted to know where does it sit? What is it currently at? So that if it was perfect, I could get it back perfect. Or if it wasn't, I knew I could get it a little better. So I started by throwing a test bar in the main spindle and a test bar on the sub spindle. I real quick dialed them in and the spindle was way off, of course, and the sub spindle was way off. So I didn't really care. I said, all right, time to take the sheet metal off. Pulling things apart, you always look for things while you're working that are gonna be a problem later on. So chips and cables, motors, linear guides that are broken, pulled both chucks off kind of earlier, the backing plates were trashed. That comes from Nobody pulling the chucks off regularly and nobody making sure the chucks are tight and the backing plates are tight because then every time the chuck actuator goes, if chips work their way in there, then it just clamps on that and clamps on that and clamps on it and the backing plates just become super pitted. So we carry on, start looking around. Oh man, rail covers need to be replaced. Rails need to be replaced. Here's a picture just of inside. The machine is tight. This is a DS30Y. So here's looking at the back from where the sub spindle is. So this would be the B axis, kind of like a tailstock, but in our case, it's the spindle. Here's the rails that hold the B axis. After you got the sheet metal off and the wipers, there were no wipers, so I got those on order. Here's after I got the front sheet metal off around the sub spindle. Really easy to work on this way. There's the sheet metal off all around the sub spindle. You can see the motor kind of sits forward and it's a belt drive to the sub spindle. Took a look, ooh, yeah, we're gonna need new rails and new trucks for the B axis. Probably chips got pounded in there or a part was flinging around and it broke that truck. There's another picture. Taking off the sheet metal, more sheet metal. The sub spindle includes a hydraulic chuck actuator and a brake, so that's three sets of hydraulic lines plus the spindle motor wires, the encoder wires, and the Y delta wires, there's a ton of stuff that goes to the sub spindle. There's the encoder. Taking a look there at the wires that go out of the motor to the Y delta contactor. And now I'm gonna work on the turret. So I got the sheet metal off around the live tooling motor and it needed to be cleaned. So now I've got some more sheet metal off and I'm looking at the X axis ball screw and the Y axis ball screw and now I'm worried that there's gonna be problems with other rails, with other screws, and with the lube lines. Boom! Uh, looks like probably they ran into the chuck on the sub spindle and maybe also just hit the casting of some sort because yeah, that's an owie. There it is again. So there's a picture from the back of the sub spindle looking kinda uh, out of the machine. You can see the motor, the brake, and the chuck actuator. That's supposed to be a nice lube line that goes to the rails, so I'm gonna be getting a new one of those. Got more sheet metal off for the turret. You can see the turret motor is inside of the turret. To get the turret off, I'll explain how to do that, but all the sheet metal that comes off around the Y axis and the X axis and the Z axis is tricky. There's a lot of pieces of sheet metal. I needed to still run the machine, so I put the control on a roller cart uh, I found this, so now it's time to order some X rails. I don't know what happened here. A tool could have fallen, like if somebody was putting a BOT tool, or if a bar bent and was spinning, or maybe, I don't think the sub spindle jaws could have hit that ding, but it was pretty nasty. Bolts, lots and lots of fasteners. The good news is there's only like five different types of fasteners. So it's pretty easy if you lay things out, I laid this on the bar feeder. If you lay things out in the order that you put the, took things apart, when you put it back together, you can just go in the reverse order. But there's basically sheet metal screws, and then there's the flat head screws, then there's the bolts for the trucks, there's the bolts for the ball screws, and the bolts for the other assembly. But don't worry too much about fasteners and exactly where they go. There's not a ton of them. 
back when I was checking the alignment, I wanted to be sure, hey, before I make a reading, I need to make sure there's no twist in the bed. So I used the lathe level tool from CNC replacement parts. This is pre-anodized version, but checked there was no twist, so I moved on. Uh, checking now the sub spindle. I wanted to see, is it crooked? Is it high? Is it low? And I didn't really care about on center because I knew I was gonna have to move the spindle anyhow. So here's another picture of checking to be sure that the sub spindle isn't crazy. And the spindle was off to begin with. And I thought, well, I have the test bar on there. The good news is it's a Y-axis machine so I can shift the grid shift in the home position for the Y-axis, which essentially turns the turret onto the center, but, and then I can move X. So I just quick dialed in the spindle, quick <laughs> in a sense, but I got the spindle somewhat straight so that then I could check concentricity and I ended up having to tweak the spindle in the sub at the end, but in the process before I took the turret off, I moved the spindle to be straight. Oh, sheet metal, pulled off the firewall support. It's a pain in the neck to get to the back bolts and then to also get to the little jack bolts at the bottom of the head casting. Have to pull off part of the parts catcher. You have to pull off some stuff to get your ratchet in there. Sheet metal. For a Y-axis lathe, if you pull everything off, there's like 45 pieces of sheet metal. I said 45. That's a lot of pieces of sheet metal. So lay them out in an order and then when you put it back together, you can easily know because what's confusing is when you're looking at this wiper, you're like, does it go on upside down or right side? And it could fit here this way or it could fit that way. More sheet metal, more sheet metal, more sheet metal, more sheet metal, lots of sheet metal. Took the turret off. That's not that big of a deal. Put an eye bolt in the top and it picks up nicely. You're gonna have to disable the parameters for the turret motor so that it's not looking for the home switches or the motor. The tricky part is, once you do that, you've then got to home everything, or I don't disconnect it while the power's on, but then home everything and then try not to turn the machine off again so you aren't stuck jogging with setting 53. So this is with the turret removed. This machine has a subplate, which I way prefer over the SL lathes. So there's four bolts that hold the turret to the subplate. The subplate then bolts to the rails, and the yoke for the ball screw is attached to the subplate. So I put in a couple of eye bolts on the subplate, all the bolts and the fasteners that go into the trucks are metric, but everything else is standard. So I pulled the subplate. Um, before I pulled the subplate, I had to loosen up the yoke for the ball screw, but before I did that, I had to disconnect the temperature sensor and the lube line, unscrew that down, then I was able to undo all 16 bolts for the subplate. Here's another picture of the ball nut pulled down. You can see that lube line in the way. Getting ready to pull the subplate, Subplate comes off and a couple of these rails were cracked. There was no preload, so like they fell down. I already had disconnected the lube lines, so I didn't bend a lube line. I actually reused those lube lines. And if you're looking at this picture, we've got motor at the top, ball screw in the middle. This is a reverse anchor kit. So the ball screw has its uh, thrust bearing at the bottom. And at this point, I just disconnected all the lube lines, slid the trucks off, and then took the motor off. So here's a picture of the motor. Disconnect the four bolts for the motor, disconnect the coupling, loosen it up, slide the coupling out. Then there's a snap ring that holds in one of the bearings, pull that out. You've gotta get all of the fittings and plumbing for the turret and the air. Disable the air parameter, turn the air off to the machine because it's loose. So here's another picture. It's really convenient if you have a thumb ratchet or the little, little ratchets that you can just spin in your hands to get some of these bolts off. Here's underneath the x-axis wedge on the y-axis rail. I just looking down there, it was gross. Here's another one, lube lines are trashed, things don't look nice. There is a rail for y, uh-uh. Well, truck, there is the rail. Things got hit hard. So, getting rails and ball screws for y, as well as for x, as well as for b. Here's another picture of a smashed rail. Chips get pounded and get pounded and pounded, and then when Y goes back and forth to home, every time it just hits it, and it ends up damaging your trucks. Having a nice set of ratchets, extensions, bit drivers, swivel heads, there's that little thumb ratchet. Really convenient uh, when you're in there doing stuff in tight quarters. So taking a look at the rails, figuring out, all right, 
the forklifts and crane situation was not great here. So I did everything without taking the wedge out. Probably should have, could have, I didn't. It, I don't know, it was just, I didn't wanna try to deal with it. So I ended up using machinist jacks to lift the wedge up and replace the rails and the trucks underneath the wedge, which sit on the plate for Z axis. So it's the plate for Y. It wasn't terrible. There are through hole bolts everywhere to get to everything. So you can see I pulled the cover up. The rail is in bad shape. Ended up, did one side at a time. I kind of loosened up the others so that they were there. That way I didn't tip the wedge over, but I jacked it up, got in there with stubby Allen wrenches, took that rail out. There's the rail is missing. And you can see I've kind of got it spaced up. I did have to pull out the ball nut for Y so that I could get the wedge a little higher. There you can see everything is cleaned, everything is scotch brighted, stoned, blown out, alcohol wiped down, blown out again. Use a rag that has no lint and you can get everything ready to slide the new ones in. So there you can see I've got the rails off and the ball screw out for X just to make things lighter and nothing was in my way. Now here's a picture of the slot where the rail is going to sit in. Now there's a cam bolt that sits in a round hole that they broached a hex head into that's off center. So as you tighten that, you're pushing the rail up against the shoulder. But you have to have all of those at just the right position to slide the rail in. And the tricky part is if you slide the rail in first, you then cannot fit the cam lock bolts in. So put the lock bolts in, get them all set right, clean everything out, and then you can slide the rail in. Now because of how tight everything was underneath the wedge, I did not have room to slide the rail in and then drop the bolts, especially because the wedge was jacked up and I couldn't move the wedge. So I had to figure out what bolts I could slide through and then I had to tape the other bolts halfway up so that I could slide the rail in, then pull the tape out, drop the screw in, tighten down and torque the screw. So a few of the bolts I could get to, the other ones I had to tape on. You can see there, the rail is just kind of sitting in there nicely, but it hasn't been locked down. There you can see the new rail. I've got the jacks holding it up. Here's the other one, getting ready to slide it in. Good and clean, everything. Stone the surface above that the truck is gonna sit to while you're in there so that there's nothing dirty. One hair, one chip, garbage. If it gets on there, now everything is crooked, everything is not aligned. You're gonna have issues with alignment, so everything has to be clean. Here's the new trucks for the Y. I got the lube lines already hooked up. It's easier to do that outside of the machine. Some trucks, if you disconnect the plastic piece, the preload on the balls will go everywhere. These were THK, they didn't do that, but still keep that plastic piece in there. So you can see after I got the screws down, after I got the cam bolts tight, torque everything, torque everything, feel it all. I then got a little aluminum bar and I put the shield on top of the rail. I prefer the sheet metal rail over the plastic little plugs and it would have been really hard to get the plugs inside of some of those holes underneath that wedge. So I'm glad I had the sheet metal covers and then you put a little screw in on the end and you can tie it down. Lube lines. You want to get yourself a nice set of 3 8 open end or 10 millimeter wrenches, grind the edges, grind the jaws. It's going to be tight working in there. Then you're gonna, so I kind of skipped forward here. Now I've lowered the wedge back down onto the trucks. I slid the trucks in, I got the lube lines in. Now I'm gonna float the ball screw in. I had the motor off so I could easily just grab and rotate the ball screw. And so I kind of pushed Y all the way back towards the motor, cinched down the ball nut. Then I kind of ran it forward, ran it back again, kind of floated it in to be sure it was aligned in the yoke. And then I cinched it down. There I am. You can just kind of reach around some of them. Here's a kind of overview picture. I don't have the sub spindle out yet. I'm just working on the wedge and it's going pretty good. So here I am, another picture. Everything's back together. Now it was time to pull out the sub spindle. So this was gonna be fun. I got some pallets, laid some pallets right in front of it. Decided it would be easier since I wasn't dealing with the spindle to just pull it out, set it on a pallet and work underneath it and then put it back. That way I didn't have to disconnect the Y Delta contactor, all the encoder stuff, disable the spindle, uh, hydraulic lines, plug hydraulic lines. So just moved it right out. So I was able to get an eye bolt on both of them, kind of get a fork in there. I would have loved to have like an H-frame crane or something directly overhead. 
pulled it out. It sits on a subplate just like the tailstock does, and it's pinned and shimmed. So you can see here from the back, now it's out also where the shims would sit. Those are ground shims for getting the height correct. And now I'm gonna pull the motor, gonna pull the rest of the lube lines. I did roughly indicate it in just to see where that plate was, and the plate was within a few thousand, so I know it's not crazy. Here I am, I don't know why I jumped to x-axis and working on the bearings for x and putting in new couplers. The couplings were just shot. They clicked. I mean, the thing had been hammered. So here's just kind of checking real quick. Hey, where's that sub plate so that I can get close so that I'm not moving the sub spindle all over the place with the pins. And just kind of put my indicator base on the sub plate for y and checked where z B was, and it wasn't that far off. Pulled the shims off, cleaned the shims. Yeah, look at that truck. That's the truck that was under the sub spindle. Uh, one side has ball bearings, the other side does not, and it's blown out. Here's some more, I think, uh, all four of those are missing the balls and the keepers. Yeah, it was basically just like grinding. I don't even know how their part transfers were. I don't think they were doing part transfers at all or, or they were doing them like this. Yeah, rough shape. I ended up just grabbing a spindle liner to hold up the, the sheet metal for the ceiling, but got the subplate off from the front. I could get the bolts that hold the ball nut into the yoke, got that out, then pulled the motor out, then pulled the ball screw out, then it was time to pull the rails off. Ended up getting new coupling for that motor. So there you can see everything is dirty. And so it's a big process of just cleaning and getting everything ready to put the new parts in. So the rails are out pull out the cam bolts, blow everything out, pull out the bearings, scotch bright the housings where the bearings sit, get everything ready and clean. Now everything is back in, we're ready to put in the new rails. It wasn't a big deal because I didn't have to tape any bolts on them. New rails are in and the process of the rail that I kind of do is I snug it, snug. Then I snug the, or the cam bolts, get the cam bolts kind of tight and cinch them down and get them torqued so that you're not stretching or bulging that rail out too much. So new rails are on, then the metal covers are on the rails. Now I'm back working on the ball screw for x-axis. It has the new bearing upgrade, put in the little bumper at the bottom, set everything right. Here's a picture. Now that I've got everything in there, I'm gonna cover it up so I don't drop something on it or put a ding on it. There's the lube lines for the x-axis because I'm gonna be getting ready to put the rails on. Here's a picture of some of the rails and you can see the little plastic keeper inside there. So you'll end up putting the rail right, the truck right next to the rail and slide it off of one and right onto the other. That way you don't lose any of the bearings. Here's kind of getting ready for the lube line for the x-axis, I did blow everything out. Took the lube lines apart, blew every line out, made sure that there was lube getting through everything. And then you can see I slid the truck onto the x and I ended up putting two extensions and some holes and then taping between them because I didn't want this whole thing to fall down. There's enough preload on the trucks for x that they stayed put, but when I put the sub plate on, it was enough weight that it would have pulled down and I didn't want to stress any of the lube lines. Way easier, by the way, to do this with the turret off than to try to do all this underneath the turret. Here's another picture there, holding kind of everything up. This is the bottom of the subplate. This got scotch brighted, stoned, cleaned, washed off, and everything was ready. Kind of just some casting imperfections I found. It wasn't a problem at all. I did find a big old nick on one side of it. Here you can see some of the push-pull blocks Let's see, here's that nick. I'm not sure how this happened. I don't think it would have been a big deal, but I just took a little sanding pad and sanded it down and it'll be flat, it'll be fine. But I think that may have been from a thrown part that hit it. So here it is with the subplate back on. And then I did end up indicating the subplate in just so that it was close and that the turret wasn't sitting super crooked. This is one of those things where if you forget to tighten the bolts that hold that plate onto the trucks. You cannot go back and fix it unless you take the turret off. So go slow and methodically, make sure everything is tight and triple torqued. So there you can see the extensions are holding up the subplate and everything looks clean and new. And it's working pretty well. 
putting in the bolts now for the trucks. You kind of have to shimmy them a little bit to get it right. Then once the subplate was on, I ended up screwing up the ball nut and you gotta be particular about where it is and where it sits with the subplate and the yoke because if you get the lube line position wrong, you're gonna end up having to rotate it around. So pay attention to that. And there's another picture, lots and lots of bolts. Here's kind of working on a lube line underneath it. Yeah, it's, it's tight in there. I think this picture I'm showing my hand holding the little banjo fitting for the ball nut. So then I needed to actually raise it up just a little bit. I don't remember if it was to get a truck in or if it was to get it in, but I just put a little extension against a hole and a big driver that I had and was able to just push the whole subplate assembly up. Here's some more pictures. I said I indicated it in just to get it close. I got it within a foul or two and, and said good enough. Here's a picture from the bottom. You can see I'm screwing in the temperature compensation. So the ball screw, if it gets hot, will try to shrink or expand so that it holds your tolerance correctly. I normally don't like this parameter. I turn it off because I find people chase offsets all day, but I put it back together the way it was so that it's on there and the lube line fitting was correct. You gotta make sure that you get the O-ring on both sides of that banjo fitting. Don't lose the O-ring. Here's a picture. Me, oh boy, getting ready to put the turret back on. This is a large, this is a hybrid turret. Here's a picture holding it with a chain hoist. I raised it up and cleaned the bottom of it, but it hangs nicely. It's just at the right angle. The hole's perfect spot to the engineer's perfect placing of the eye bolt hole. So cleaned everything out of the bottom, stoned it, got it ready to set it on there. I did leave two of the little push pull blocks so I could push it in, jog the X down, catch those push pull blocks, jog the X up, and then it kind of just sat right down, nice and easy. And then I was able to take the big four bolts and just screw them in lightly. So there it is, kind of sitting in there. The you, if you jog Y all the way forward, if 700's turned off and you have the X all the way down, it's surprisingly out there. It's not like deep in the machine. Here's another picture from the back. Going back to pulling motors, I did just pull the motor for the live tool. I tried to disable the parameter and it didn't like that. I don't know why. The machine had two Mocons and, and a bunch of stuff. So it was easier to just pull the motor, set it in the back and not worry about it. Here's my boneyard of parts. A ton of stuff. This thing said was beat up. So I got the turret back on and now I'm back in here working on the sub spindle. I don't, this is a while ago. I don't remember the exact order, but I did them kind of together. And let's see here, getting ready to put that sub plate back on for the sub spindle, man, back here. You need a little ratchet and a big ratchet. The bolts that hold the turret on are specced out at 300 foot pounds. I've done it a bunch with the torque wrench and I have a good feel for it. I know how tight to get them, but I use this big, big ratchet and then I get like a four foot bar on it. And if you jog X up in the back and get it to just the right position, you can have the bar stick out of the back of the machine and it's not a problem. So more tools, hammers, I'm the hammer man. Lots of hammers. And there it is, kind of tightening it down with everything new. Surprisingly, this machine didn't need new Z rails. I don't know why, but that was why I kind of checked the spindle at the beginning. I wanted to be sure that the Z rails weren't all wowied and I needed to redo those, but Z rails were okay. X and Y and B took all the hits. So now we're gonna need to move things around to get the wedge square and the wedge sits on the subplate for Y and there are holes that go through the wedge that'll get to the truck bolts for the wedge for Z, which is the subplate for Y. I'm just talking now, but you can do it. I've done it. So you can see here, this is kind of tricky. If you look deep into this picture, you can see the bit driver that goes through the casting next to the rail and all the way down to the truck bolt so that I can get the wedge square and then I can start working on the turret. Here's another one there, you can see my extension. You gotta jog Y to just the right place and have X out of the way, and then you can reach in there and get it. Here's another one from the back. I'm looking at the Y motor, that's the X ball screw, and there's a hole I can go through to get to one of those truck bolts. So yeah, get yourself some good ratchets and some good extensions. So all of that was because I wanted to get the wedge square, but the wedge, which moves an X, 
sits on y, but so I gotta get y square first. So if you notice, the wedge tool that's on the spindle is sitting flat, so I'm gonna dial in y. The spec for y is like two tenths over four inches, and you only have about four inches of travel if you have parameter, I think it's that 700. It's the one that turns off the wedge angle and lets you just jog y by itself. Just don't leave any wrenches down there and drive into something. Keep all your tools out of the machine. So jog across the spindle nose. It's way easier with the bridge tool. You can get those at CNC replacement parts. You can rent them too, but it's way easier than jogging over, touching a spindle nose, jogging over, touching the spindle nose. You can just go across it once, tap, tap, tap. You need a bigger hammer or you don't. Tap, tap, get Y square, tighten down Y. Then you can move your indicator now to X, which would be the wedge or the turret, put anywhere on there, and then you can run that up and down. And that was why back at the beginning, I just said, all right, I'm gonna get the spindle close to square so that then I can deal with this wedge stuff. So here I am with the ratchet in the turret. So after you get Y square, after you get X, which isn't really X, the wedge square, then you can deal with, okay, now I need to tighten down the turret by putting my indicator on the turret face. You can check it in X this direction or in Z because they're square. Hopefully I'm not talking too much or too fast, but here's a picture with the indicator on the turret and I'll make sure that that turret is square by using the push-pull blocks. Those are really simple. I wish they were finer threads, but you can do it. Typically do one in the corner and one. Don't worry about the others, just stick with one. And if you can't get any adjustment, you gotta loosen them all up, loosen up all four bolts that hold the turret, then pull the turret up just a little bit, snug the bolts down a little bit, and then you can push that turret around a little bit. So that's all checking on an edge where you'd bolt a BOT tooling. If the turret's square, sitting on a square wedge, sitting on a square Y, and the Z is square to the spindle, you should be really close to center line. And on a Y axis machine, we just shift the home position for Y and we don't have to move the spindle. We keep the spindle square. Everything is dandy dandy. Okay, got wedge, turret, Y, X, spindle square. Let's deal with the sub spindle. New rails, uh, new lube lines actually, they were hosed. Remember they were totally bent. I wasn't gonna try to fix that. And a new ball screw that actually feels nice. So stone the top of the sub plate table put the rails on, put the lube lines on, way easier by the way when the sub spindle is out. Ball screws up at the front, I'll end up turning that in and floating it at the back and getting ready to set the sub plate on it. So the sub plate is set, dialed in the sub plate with my indicator, got it close, and then it's time to pick up the spindle, which doesn't pick up that nice, <laughs> and then set it on. Let's see. So here we are, shims are ground, not, not reground, just stoned and we know they're flat. And there we are putting it back in. Thing about a sub spindle, it's basically a tailstock. As far as alignment goes, it just spins. So don't think of it as extra complicated. You just need to be sure that your main is flat, straight, square, true, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the sub. And I have a process that I think makes it go a little easier. Just Put the tail stock or, or sub spindle on there and the first thing to do is to get it straight to Z and to get it flat. Don't worry about concentricity to main, okay? And you can do that with two indicators generally easy. And if it's low, we're not gonna worry about that to begin with. So we're just gonna measure on the top and if we measure on the top, we're gonna notice it's gonna tilt off the side. And if we measure on the side, it's gonna be going one direction, either toward the pendant on the front of the machine or toward the electrical cabinet on the back. So get it straight. It's just like doing a tailstock, loosen up the bolts, push and pull with the set screws, get it straight. Then if it's straight, then make sure it's straight with Z. Then from there, let's make sure that we're height-wise close to the main because we don't wanna be straight, but this direction or straight, but that direction. So get it straight, then get it you know, flat, and then line it up. But this, this could take you all day. You might have to grind a shim, you might have to lift it up, put a shim in, and every time <laughs> you adjust it, guess what? Flat, straight, <laughs> all over again. So it's like this process of going around and around. When adjusting the subspindle with the push-pull set screws that push on the pins of the subplate that the subspindle sits on, it's so much easier if you have two Allen wrenches or an Allen wrench and 
a ratchet because then you can easily just turn them both the same amount because you're trying to get them to line up but not go crooked and you go around and around and around and it's this process of you get a little better and you get a whole lot worse and you start over and then you start over and you start over and you eventually get it to where the sub spindle is concentric with the main, it is flat, it's not high, it's not low, it's not tilted down, up, or canted side to side. It's like a tailstock, just it spins. So think of it just like that and you'll get it. Now it's sheet metal time. Sub spindles align, main spindles align, Z, Y, turret, wedge, I haven't dialed in the center yet for the boring bar holder. That'll come since we have a Y-axis lathe. But it's time to put sheet metal together and I was getting tired of aligning the sub spindle. When I put the sheet metal together, I clean it all. I clean, clean, clean. It's so much easier to put sheet metal together when it's not greasy and full of chips. Clean out the drains inside the casting. Start putting the sheet metal together. You can see here, I did not do that orange hose thing and I didn't have time to fix it and pull all the cables out, so I put it back together. But pay attention to anything that's going to move. Cables, wire tie them up. Make sure chips aren't gonna fall on a terminal strip. Make sure nothing is going to hit a belt or a brake or some chuck actuator or some part that moves. Put everything in its place because it's gonna have to run for a long time unattended with no problems. So more sheet metal more sheet metal, got the turret on, put the sheet metal on the back, then dealt with all the hoses, tie up all the hoses, tie up all the conduits, tie up all the wires, make sure everything is a-okay. Ooh, I don't like electrical tape on wires, but I had to put it back together. Battle wounds. Wow, look at this here. Yeah, that indent went through the sheet metal and actually through the sheet metal in the pendant. I'm sure the guy who was running it did his pants. I mean, that had to make some noise. Whew, glad I wasn't there. Here's a picture looking through the back, kind of where the tailstock would be looking forward. And there's some sheet metal on for the Y axis and for the X, that's kind of a bear to put together. There's some more sheet metal, the way cover is going back on. There's another battle wound. I, I don't want to talk about that. Way wipers, it's so much easier when you take them apart if you lay them in the order, and then I usually lay them in the order that I need to put them back together, and some of them you wanna put one in first and then the other one overlaps it, so just pay attention. I had to throw this picture in. The electrical cabinet on this machine was loaded. They had live tooling, they had C-axis, sub-spindle, B-axis, a ton of stuff, so I just threw a picture of that in there. Their subplates, I keep saying subplates, their backing plates for their spindles were thrashed. You can see there, that has some pretty deep pitting in it. I stoned it best I could, put some light oil on it, and I had to put it back together. And I told them, hey, you guys need to take these chucks off and you need to clean these backing plates and make sure they're not loose and the chuck isn't just pounding into it every time it clamps or unclamps. After that, I put a little indicator tool in the spindle, held it in the jaws, and then I dialed in the center line for a boring bar holder. This makes sure that your drills are on center and also that your turning tools aren't cutting high or cutting low. So you'll run down to your F2 center line, you can set the parameter, I think it's 64, it's been a long video, but that's your, your center line for your spindle. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna dial it in in X and in Y. And if you're a little bit off in X, jog X down a few thou, and then jog Y. And if you have that parameter turned off to just jog Y, you can jog the two of them, and then you need to go reset the home position for X, and you need to reset, it's the tool change position for X, and the same one for Y. Then zero return Y, turn on the parameter, zero return X, turn on the parameter, cycle the power on the machine, and then come back down to your center line position and dial in and check that you're good. If you really wanna do it for kicks, you can put the indicator tool in the sub spindle and check it as well. That's sure that you're not drilling crooked holes and all sorts of problems. So, last picture, boom, no screws. I put all the screws, maybe. No, yeah, there were a bunch laying around and I threw those away. <laughs> Don't tell anybody about that. This is my first video of this kind. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you're still watching, sorry it was so long. Hopefully I didn't drive you nuts talking too fast, but please comment, talk about it. Tell me if you wanna see more videos like this. If you don't wanna see videos like this, if you don't, just don't watch my channel. And uh, please subscribe, it helps out uh, more people to see the channel. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, remember, you don't need a bigger hammer. <laughs>